calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm. Hey, I've been getting the run around for two hours, and I'm coming up. Oh, 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 hot sauce. Oh, hot. Feels the taste of the food. Hey, this is the best Mexican food in L.A. Hey, my regulars. Oh, nice hello. to see you again. How are you? Wow. It's from the factory where my sister works. One of the seams is crooked, so I got it cheaper. Doesn't show. You can get them at Carmen's dress shop around the corner. Hey, look. I got my teachers back. What's that? Oh. oh, who's that? This is Emilio. He's my 10-year-old. Oh, he's cute. Big boy. And this is Hector. He's five. Oh, look at Hector. With my sister. Mm, she's cute, too. I can't believe you got a 10-year-old. Oh, gracias. Last weekend, I took them all to Disneyland. I've never been to Disneyland. They made you city editor and you've never been to Disneyland? That's not Metro. That's another kingdom. Are you ready to order? Rosa, does no substitutions mean I can't have a tamale with my enchilada instead of a taco? For you, no problem. La amiga! Apúrense! Apúrense! Ahí viene la amiga! La amiga? Immigration is a bust. Is Rosa illegal? From the way she moved out of here, I say she is. Hold it. This is Charles Hugh, our managing editor. How you know? Hi. Tiffany's going to learn the newspaper business, starting at the bottom. Where's that? <laughs> Where I started. As the owner? As a copy girl. Ah. Uh... Now she expects no special treatment, so why don't you take her down to the newsroom and see that she gets settled? Miss Pinchon, I'd be delighted. I didn't realize you were building a dynasty. Welcome aboard, Tiffany. You ready? Well, damn, Margaret, I'll give it a try. Oh, of course you will. Good luck. How's it going? Well, we got letters from two guys, one in Fountain Valley, the other in Van Nuys, each claiming to be the son of God. One of them is lying. Or both. God sent me a postcard last week from the isolation ward of a Phoenix hospital. He didn't mention either one of them. How was lunch? I don't know. We never got it. Immigration staged a raid right before the tamales. They took Rosa. They're going to deport her. Are you sure? Yeah, we saw them haul her away. Now we're trying to find out what'll happen to her kids. Maybe she'll tell the authorities where they are. What? And risk having her kids deported? I doubt it. That'll be fine. Don't worry about it, Lou. They take care of their own. Your concern is overwhelming. I imagine you must know your way around here pretty well. Uh, not really. I've only been here once before. That was years ago. Aunt Margaret made me take the tour. Mm -hmm. All I remember is that everything was really dirty. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to love it here. See, a newspaper is, well, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's special. Every day we have to fight six deadlines, and we never know what the product will look like from one day to the next, but it's still the best job in the world. Today you might interview a president, tomorrow cover mm, the birth of a baby gorilla. It's fun. That's what it is. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. It's the only way to learn. I do have one question. Sure. What time do I get off? I was wondering because I didn't realize I'd be starting work today, you know? I gotta meet some friends. And that's up to Mr. Grant, the city editor. Now, this is the newsroom where you'll work. It's right at the heart of the paper. We have a, a good, solid staff here, and I, I think you'll fit right in. Lou, this is Tiffany, our new copy girl. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Mr. Grant, could I use your phone? I gotta make a call. 
I, I think it'd be better if you use one of those other phones. Sure. Where's my desk? You don't have one. <laughs> I don't get it. Where do I sit? <laughs> you don't. And Leon here will show you where you don't sit. Leon. Yeah, Lou. This is Tiffany. Show her around and tell her what to do. Where did you dig her up, Charlie? This one acts as if she owns the joint. I uh, dug her up in Mrs. Pinchon's office. That's her niece. I'll see you later, fellas. Uh, Mrs. Pinchon said not to give her any special treatment. Don't worry, he won't. <clears throat> what is there, Rossi? I thought you had an interview. The guy had to cancel, so I figured unless you need me for anything, I'd just sort of check up on Rosa's kids. Really? I'm just doing it to keep Billy off balance. So what about Rosa? I'm just with the others who were taken. Rosa is illegal. But now what's going to happen to her? She's in Mexico. She'll try to get back. Yeah, but in the meantime, her children, are they all right? Now nah, you wouldn't know, would you? Can, you? can you just tell me where she lives? Look, it's important. We just want to be sure her kids are taken care of. I am sure they are. Yeah, but I'd rather see for myself. Are you here about a job? Vienes a buscar trabajo? Word sure gets around. Espérame atrás, en la cocina. Look, you gotta have an address, huh? Oh. Señor, you may keep it. Oh. Gracias. Señor, por favor, uh, I'm looking. Donde esta Rosa? It's okay, buddy. I speak English. What do you want here? I'm looking for Rosa Ortega's apartment. Uh, do you know her? No one here by that name. Look, I'm a friend. I uh, I got her address from where she works. Lamigra took her away today. I'm worried about her kids. She illegal? Yeah. Well, that explains it. The illegals do not often give the right address. I assure you she's not here, and I know everyone in the building. Are you like the manager or something? Yes, I am like the manager. You needn't worry about her children, my friend. I'm sure someone is watching them. We take care of our own. Yeah, right. Continue in a moment here on A and We did run the horoscope. It was a mistake. Good day for travel, huh? Grant. Aquarius. Uh, uh, just a minute, please. Ones. Bye. Hey, uh, Tiffany. Yes. Uh, um, what do I tell this guy? He's an Aquarius. The stars are in your favor. That's the same thing you told Capricorn. I know. You're making this up? Of course. Uh, tell him to hold on. I'll take it. Uh, hold on. Never trust anyone named after a jewelry yes. store. What's mm -hmm. going on? Ah, someone left the a horoscope out of the favor. first street edition. How'd it go? Nada. No one knew anything. I need more time and an interpreter. Hey, Billy, come here. Yes. How's your Spanish holding up? If it means a trip to Barcelona, terrific. Uh, not exactly. Rossi just struck out looking for Rosa's kids. You want to give it a try? Rossi went looking for Rosa's kids? What'd they do? Owe him money? <laughs> <laughs> you want to give it a try? The few words of Spanish I know won't get me in any more doors than Rossi. Oh, uh, 
Hey, Donovan, who speaks Spanish around here? Tony Marengo. He's a Chicano. A Chicano? That's great. Where is he? How come I haven't seen him around? He's in Iceland, covering a chess tournament. Isn't there anyone else? Well, the woman who fills the vending machine speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. Then again, she doesn't speak English. I could call my neighbor, Jesus Delgado. He's a swell guy, and he's a cop. Community relations, I think. Yeah, I'll try to set up a meeting. And Billy, it wouldn't hurt if you kept your eyes open for a story. This isn't a missing persons bureau, you know. It's a newspaper. Mm -hmm. Are you sure Delgado will go for it? Oh, sure. We're good buddies. Well, I'm a little surprised at Luke only. He spoke very highly of you. You must be good friends. Garbage. He always forgets garbage day. When he does remember, he leaves the cans out there all week. I have to keep bugging him to bring him back inside. It's the only time I talk to him. A guy like that can lower property values. <laughs> to bring a picture of the kids? Oh, yeah. They're cute. Jesus, can we find them? It won't be easy. Los Angeles is a pretty big haystack. And these people have learned how to keep themselves invisible. I understand, but... You no, know, they live their whole lives in fear. Everywhere they turn, they're the victims. The smugglers, coyotes, call them pollos, which means chicken, I will tell you. They pay for the privilege of being exploited. Stand up in line for the honor. They pay the coyotes, they pay kickbacks to the labor foremen. They pay premium prices for rat-infested apartments with no plumbing. And if once, just once, they complain, oh, then La Migra magically appears. By coincidence. You've been on this beat a long time. Hmm. Yes, from the very start. It's a wet back. I live in Tijuana with six of us, my mother, no father. I used to pick the pockets of the rich gringos who came to the racetrack. When I was 14, I pimped for girls younger than me. Just to buy food, to buy milk. Was it hard getting into this country? No. Staying was very hard. I got caught seven times. But each time, I learned something new. Now, I am an American citizen. You're sure that's the same blouse? Positive. Uh, where's it say it comes from? Cabrillo Clothiers. It's a local label. I know the factory. We can walk. Where do you want lunch from? How about the deli? Hey, that's a good idea. Tiffany, how about some lunch? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. <laughs> uh, Tiffany, uh, mm, mm. I don't think you understand. You're getting lunch for us from the deli down the block. You want a pastrami on rye, extra pickles, potato salad, some iced tea, no sugar. Better write it down. Give me a grilled ham and cheese with coleslaw, nothing to drink. What are you, a camel? I'll have pastrami and an onion roll, bag of chips, and a large cream soda. That sounds good. I'll have the same. Why aren't you writing this down? I can remember it. Three pastrami's and a ham and cheese. What's the big deal? factories in one building? Uh, one factory, different labels. Come on. Your first time at a switch shop? Yes. There's probably 50 shops like this or bigger within a mile of your desk. How goes it, Walter? I'm alive. I don't know if that's good or bad. Billy, this is Walter. Believe it or not, this scruffy character owns the joint. <laughs> Walter, this is Billy. She's a friend of mine. Thank I'm you. a reporter. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, Billy, it's not all glamour. I can see that. What is Raul? 
Raoul who? I know a dozen Raouls. Raoul, who gets you all these terrific workers, at least three of whom are on the race, and you might get busted, Raoul. Raoul Villalobos? Raoul Villalobos. Why didn't you say so? I haven't seen him. What do you want him for? I'm looking for a girl, Consuela Ortega. Her sister was taken by La Migra. I just wanted to make sure the kids were okay. What do you want from me? Consuela works here. I know that. And she's illegal. I don't know about illegals. Every person in this factory has a social security card. And that doesn't make them legal. How do I know? That's all I have to go on. You could ask them. I'd be violating their civil rights if I asked them. Oh, they're illegal and he knows it. Who else would take these jobs? Yeah, I pay better than minimum wage, but no one else will take these jobs. They say they can get more on unemployment and welfare. Besides, it's not against the law to hire illegals. Doesn't that hurt American workers? <laughs> a nice blouse. May I? Hong Kong. Now, that's what hurts business. Sure, you got a good price for it, but that's because they have people to work for maybe a buck and a half a day. And I'm supposed to compete with that to keep some of the garment business in the States. If you want to understand the trade deficit, look in the mirror. You're wearing it. Probably driving it, too. Oh, you can see that Walter is a real patriot. Go on, get out of here. Oh, you want Consuela. She's the one in the orange blouse over by the wall. I'll tell Raul you're asking about it. I'm sure you will, Walter. Mm. Who's Raul? He's a coyote. He supplies the woman Walter hires. Consuelo. Somos amigos de Rosa. Queremos saber si están bien sus hijos. Sí, están conmigo, están bien. Consuelo, si necesita algo, aquí trabajo. Gracias. Consuelo, adiós. Adiós. At least she's got the kids. But what's she so afraid of? See those three girls? They get paid to do nothing but sit there and wait. When one of the workers slows down or gets sick, she's fired. Well, the girl in the first chair gets her job. By morning, there's a new third girl sitting in her chair. potato salad. I got your coleslaw. The potato salad costs extra. I don't care if it costs extra. I hate coleslaw. Hey, this is root beer. I asked for cream soda. Tiffany, I asked for ham and cheese grilled, not cold. There's something in his bed. It crunched at me. I thought I asked for rye. That's wheat berry. It's good for you. Here's your change, Lou. I like rye bread. I don't like bread that crunches. And much more, I don't like surprises. I'm sorry. The deli fouled up. And I don't see what going to get lunch has to do with learning about the newspaper business anyway. Uh, I just saw Consuelo. The kids are okay. Yeah, that's a relief. You wouldn't believe where she works. It's a sweatshop and practically around the corner. I've never seen anyone so frightened. Well, the kids are fine. That's what's important. Oh, Jesus. Fantastic. He really knows his way around. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. He sends his regards, and uh, he's got a message for you. What's that? Don't forget to put out your garbage. Thanks. ¿De qué hablas? Si tuve que trabajar tarde, es todo. Oye, que hubo una arrestra. ¿La migra? Los niños. ¿Qué pasó con los niños? No los he visto. Yo no sé. ¡Gente! 
what, what senorita? What are you doing here? There was a raid. I... Uh, I can't find the boys. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. You're going to be in L.A. next week? Oh, that's great. I love it. I love it. Good morning, Lou. Good morning. Uh, just a minute. I'll be right off. Long distance. How long? I gotta go, okay? Bye. Good morning, Tiffany. Hi, Lou. Let me give you a piece of friendly advice. Don't let me catch you there again. Next time you want to make long distance calls, make them on your own dime. You have a job to do, Tiffany. This isn't school, this is life, and you don't get graded for it. It's strictly pass or fail. You have work to do, I assume? Yeah, I can find something. Then I suggest now would be a good time to do it. Okay, Lou. Mm. Oh, look. Kid's got to learn sometime. She wants to stay in this newsroom. She's got to learn to pull her own weight. And she shouldn't be making long-distance calls from the office. And certainly not from my desk. You're absolutely right. But she didn't make the call. It came in for her. And as far as her taking her job seriously, all I know is that she was in at least an hour early this morning. Mail's already been sorted and delivered. This is pretty good stuff. Don't tell me someone finally washed the pot. Tiffany, she cleaned out everything. Even brought in some fresh roasted beans. Pretty good coffee. Tiffany. Oh, I'm really beat. I was out till three in the morning. I don't want to hear it. I was with Consuela looking for Rosa's kids. Apparently there'd been another raid last night, this one in the neighborhood. Then nobody knows if the kids were picked up or not, but they didn't come home last night. So they're either in custody or we've got two little kids wandering around the city. I checked with immigration. I'd really like to follow up on this, but I know you'll have a tough time justifying to Charlie and uh, taking me off something else. Hey, it's a big news day, Lou. The governor's convention in town. Let's climb all over it. Sure, Charlie, but we also got something else here. I'd like to jump on this whole illegal alien issue. Haven't we done that pretty well? The president is supposed to make an announcement about a new immigration policy. When that breaks, I'd love us to be ready with a tough series on the local angle. Sounds good. What do you want to do? Send Rossi, the photographer, down to the border, visit the detention camps. Billy can cover the local scene, get the feel of what L.A. is like to someone who's living here illegally. I should make three or four part series. But do me a favor. Don't forget the governor's convention. Oh, no. I just got the go-ahead from Charlie on the illegal alien series. Very good. Yeah, it'll give you something to do while you're looking for the kids. I'll remember that, thanks. Tiffany, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come down on you like that, and I apologize. What do you say we start over, okay? Okay. All right, now here's what I want you to do. Come in here. The White House is due to issue a statement on immigration policy. Check the wire out of Washington and bring me the story as soon as it comes over. Okay. Oh, uh, while you're at it, could you be a little more careful? You're mixing up the mail. I'm sorry. Everyone makes mistakes. Oh, one more thing. This is the best coffee I ever had in my life. These are the holding cells. They're mostly empty now, but by tomorrow morning, we'll probably have a thousand people in here. Sorry, we have to protect their rights. Can I shoot the empty cells? Yeah, I guess so. Is it all right if we talk to some of the men? Sure, go ahead. Alone? All right, suit yourself, but remember, no pictures. <sighs> Hi. Is this on the record or for background? Which way do we find out more about immigration? Background. Okay, Mr. Randall, strictly for background. How many documented workers are there in this country? None. We have an awful lot of illegal aliens. Like, I'm not trying to pick a fight, but these people are aliens, and they're here illegally, no matter what the PR is. Then why is it the administration and the director of your agency call them undocumented workers? 
They're politicians, Mr. Grant. They talk about the problem. I have to deal with it. There's a difference. Semantics aside, how many? As regional director, I have to say five million. The State Department figures more than 10, maybe 12 million. We've got no way of knowing. Could be 15 million. Maybe 5% of the population of the U.S. is comprised of illegal aliens. Was there a job waiting for you here? There's always a job waiting. I'm a bricklayer, you know, a good one. And I know San Carlos, I can make 120, even $150 a week. In Tijuana, I'm lucky to make $30 a week. So for the last two years, I come to work in the States. How many of you are doing the same thing? I hear there's a thousand people coming into Tijuana every day, and they all want to cross the border. But this is the man you should talk to. He crossed the border many times. Hey, viejo. I have crossed a few times. How many? Oh, 100, maybe more. I've been caught nine times, but always I come back. He works in the fields. It's much harder to get caught in the city. That wasn't true of Rosa Ortega. She's a friend of ours. Have you seen her? We think she may be down here. Do you know Albert Smith? Albert Smith? No. He lives in Los Angeles. Okay. I get your point. Um, what happens when they catch you? <laughs> Nothing. They take your name, or whatever name you give them, and they take you to the border and let you go. Then, when it is dark, you turn around and come back. It's just a game. Well, it can be expensive to play. You see that man over there? Yeah. He paid $500 to get his family across. What happens now? Does he lose the money? No. The Coyote guarantees delivery no matter how many times it takes. By tomorrow, he should be in Los Angeles. But can you trust the Coyote? Senor, we have to. Look, the aliens do the job that Americans don't want, so they're not taking jobs away from anybody. I don't buy it, and I've worked with illegals for more than 20 years. They're getting jobs in factories and foundries and every construction trade you can think of. What's wrong with a guy who is starving in Mexico, wanting to work at a better job here? Look at the contribution they've made here. Look at what they're taking. I've heard the third leading source of revenue to Mexico is the money these illegals are sending home. We're losing billions every year. I've heard that the laws would be enforced very quickly, but the employers don't want it. They want a cheap labor force. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You guys agree on something. So what we need is some new legislation. Oh, it's a political football. No one wants to deal with it. What do you propose? I just think it's a scandal that a country as powerful as the U.S. can't control its own border. If we sealed it off, maybe they have to solve their own problems, control the population, have some land reform. The U.S. is like a safety valve that eases the pressures inside Mexico. And if you close the border, you will have a revolution in Mexico in 20 minutes. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. You can see by the fence, this is a popular place for them to come over. And we repair it constantly. You look at that. I'd say that old boy was determined. Must be pretty desperate. No, wouldn't you be? There's Mexico on the other side of that fence. That's not much of a border, is it? Our area runs from here to the freeway. One of our units has been through here to sweep the road recently. You can tell. No tracks. You come by this time tomorrow, you'll think an army's marched through here. I can see it's going to be a long night. Oh, they're all long nights. Have you always been in the patrol? No, no. I used to be a druggist in Maryland. I was bored stiff. And a friend told me about the patrol, and I've been here ever since. It's almost nine years now. When do you think they'll start coming? Mm, they're out there now. I can't see a thing. I believe it. They're there. You see? All right, let's get moving. We can't let them get behind us. What is this guy? Part mountain goat? Blue. Uh. If it's all right.
right with you, I'm going to take off a little early. What's up? Jesus and I are going to go looking for the kids. He's got a hunch they might be a little more uh, visible around dinner time. Mm. You know, every time I drive to and from work, I find myself looking down an alley for a couple of kids. So do I. Stuff looks pretty good, Lou. Yeah. What's doing, Billy? Oh, I'm uh, tracking down a lead on that illegal alien story. It's uh, it's a little slow developing, but still haven't found the kids. What do you think? I don't know what's going on in my own city room. I mean, they don't have a policy. They have a commission to study the problem again. Isn't that typical? What are you talking about? Didn't you see the wire on the administration's new immigration policy? They haven't come up with a thing. I've had, I've had it for two hours. Haven't you seen the story? Not yet, Charlie. Well, it's here. Let me know when you find it. Hi, Luke. Where's that wire story I told you about? The one out of Washington? I haven't seen it yet. It came in two hours ago. What are you doing back here? You got local news on the national hook. You got national news on the foreign hook. It's not as if I asked you to do something unusual. Just find one little story and hand it to me. Is that so hard? Maybe it's in the stuff I haven't gotten to yet. Okay, where's that? Over there. This stuff is three hours old. Well, there's been a lot of it coming in. This is a daily newspaper, Tiffany. There it is. You went right by it. I'm sorry. This is half the story. Help me find the rest of it. You take this pile, I'll take this pile. Hurry. Let me see. Here it is. You went right by it again. Look at this. What does that say? Illegal aliens. No, it doesn't say illegal aliens. It says... Read this. Well, we got six. About 15 got away. It got kind of crazy back there. Yeah, it's unusual. Most aliens are pretty docile. Average Jose, he just wants a job. Dude, I don't blame him. If I was in his spot, I'd climb that fence, too. Does it bother you catching them, then? No, that's the fun part. Yeah, it is. It's just like hunting. Only Jose's a lot smarter than any deer. To tell the truth, I haven't hunted a deer since I've had this job. Don't need to. This is a better game. Is that all it is, then? Just a game? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Only the odds are in his favor. Once he gets past the 30 guys we have on duty, he's pretty much home free. And last night, he lost. But tomorrow, or the next day, or a week from now, he'll win. He always does. And he knows it. Is that right, amigo? <laughs> right. <Come> on. <laughs> What's on your mind, Mr. Grant? Well, uh, it's about Tiffany. Well, you don't have to give me special reports. Uh, but as long as you're here, how is she doing? Well, she... makes great coffee. Best we've ever had in the newsroom. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. If she ever inherits this newspaper, I'm sure that will come in very handy. Is there anything else? Yes, there is. She's gone. Now, I have a feeling you've left out something between the great coffee and her departure. I have left something out, Mrs. Pinchon. Tiffany has a problem. I know that she's headstrong and she needed discipline and I just thought her involvement in the paper might give her some motivation. Motivation isn't enough. Mrs. Pinchon, your niece can't read. She can't read? Are you serious? I'm afraid so. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. At Mark 
regret. Good grief. You have to climb that hill every day. It's only 74 steps. Oh. I should have brought my climbing ropes. Oh, my dear Tiffany, I... I don't think you've accumulated vacation time yet. I, uh, guess you talked to Mr. Grant. Yes, I did. Is what he says true? Depends on what he said. He thinks you can't read. There are some things that I do better. I see. Well, perhaps there's some reason other than some visual difficulty. No, uh-uh. I've had all the tests and there is nothing wrong with me. But how did you ever get through school? People didn't suspect that I couldn't read. They just all thought that I was a disciplinary problem and I let them think that. I kept changing schools and at the end of each year they promoted me. My teachers were relieved to get rid of me. Jiffy, I'm so sorry. I'll get by. Life is more than just getting by. But there's so many important things that you're going to miss. I mean, there's so many things you can't do if you can't read. Can't you see that I don't care? Why should you? I can't buy that. I think you do care. I think if I snap my fingers, suddenly you could read. You wouldn't exactly protest, would you? So? Then it's not that you don't want to read. Of course not. Okay. Then, uh, it's really just a matter of good, hard work, isn't it? And do you know something? I bet that you work harder to cover up than you'd work learning how to read. How can I start learning how to read? I'm 18 years old. It's too late. I know exactly how you feel. No, I was... And I was considerably older than you are when Matthew died. And I was faced with having to learn how to run a newspaper. I, I was just like you. I didn't, didn't want anyone to know that I couldn't do it. But the difference is, they all knew just how inadequate I was. So I set out to learn. Sometimes I thought it would never end. And then one morning I, I woke and, and I discovered that instead of dreading the day ahead, I couldn't wait to get to work. I was beginning to learn. I'd like you to have that feeling. What do you want me to do? Make a commitment as a favor to me. I'm scared. Of course you're scared. Of course you're scared. Now, <clears throat> why don't you start unpacking and... You make me a cup of coffee. Not a bad night's work. Don't you get to quit now? Oh, I'll punch out in an hour. Guess the guys you don't catch here, you'll get at the checkpoint further up along the highway. Yeah, we'll get a lot of them. Most of them will get through. We're lucky to catch one in every eight. The guys in the front office there told me you get one out of every three. 
How do you explain that? Well, I don't. No, that's your job. A couple of nights ago, we caught so many, we had to shut the checkpoint down. Of course, the minute we shut the checkpoint down, the smugglers know it, and then the aliens really pour in. So what's the answer? Mm, I don't deal in answers. What would you do? Issue national identity cards to everybody in the country? Then the liberals and the conservatives will kill you. Where are we going? Well, people don't usually park trucks in the middle of fields. Guy walked off and left his keys. Illegals, you think? No, it looks wet to me. care about the aliens. For a second, I thought it was... Yeah, so did I. What's the difference? I'm here. We've been looking for the children. Have you heard anything? Nothing. I've been working here because they know the place. What about your apartment? I had to move. The landlord rented the room when I was taken. I left word with the family that moved in. And that night, when I finish work, I go out and look for my boys. Hey, Sus, over here. Rosa, there's someone I want you to meet. Oh, thanks, Jesus. Congratulations. Lou? Yeah. Tomorrow, garbage day. Ah. <gasps> boundaries are totally artificial. California was part of Mexico however many years ago. We could be the people jumping the fence. Look, talking about what could have been isn't going to do a thing for the people we just saw. I'm trying to put it in historical perspective. Okay, go back to Cortez. Go back to Spain conquering Mexico. The Aztecs conquering Mayans. How far back you want to go? I'd like to go back as far as yesterday. How'd I go? Oh, this is story. I just need a little time to sort things out. Tomorrow, okay? I need it by six. About 12 books. I'll get my stuff in the soup. I want to see everything you shot right away. Okay. I got something to cheer you up. Rosa's back, and the kids are safe at home. Great. What's the matter? That was supposed to be good news. You're tired, huh? No, it's not just that. It's thinking about the hundreds of Rosas and the thousands of their kids. I'm Karen Stone. Jarring testimony. Courtroom drama. Just when you thought you'd seen enough, round two of the Menendez brothers' shocking case. Eric and Lyle Menendez, only on Biography This Week. Saturday at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific on A&E. Now, a cop goes south of the border to expose a gang involved in slavery and stolen goods. Mexico sets the scene for Police Story, next on A&E. Turb 
I'd like to confirm. Hey, I've been getting the runaround for two hours. And I'm well, can you tell me approximately how much money was missing? Was it over a thousand? Here's a guy who wants to know what happened to little Abner. He retired, didn't he? Yeah. And Dog Patch went condominium. Here, you break the news to him. Ooh. Don't let anyone tell you L.A. doesn't have great bars. Morning, Jack. Why are you yelling? Listen, can I make a minor request? What? Can you not have everyone typing at once? It's nine in the morning, Jack. Everyone's out on assignment. Hey, anything interesting come in? I got a column, Joe. You can always use the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do, look under notions? I'm serious. I watched an old reporter use the yellow pages when he ran out of ideas. Just open it at random. Come up with a column on ice sculptors or incense manufacturers. Didn't you do a column on incense manufacturers last year? <laughs> Cute. Why don't you write a column on how to write a column? I did that. Right? Twice. Oh. You guys have got it made. All you have to do is sit here and wait for things to happen. I have to be creative. Mm. Five days a week, 50 weeks a year. It's an impossible job. And you prove it, five days a week, 50 weeks a year. <laughs> it's lonely at the top. Oh, yeah. Fun, but lonely. Boy, the weirdos who write to the paper. Oh, did you get my letter? To City Desk, L.A. Tribune. The man was in trouble, but a Samaritan who was traveling came upon him and was moved with compassion when he saw him. Quote, unquote. Let me see that. But as you know, I do not always show compassion. Sometimes I am an avenging angel in the hand of God that kills. Now I am back. Samaritan. Who is it? Samaritan. About five years ago, six unsolved murders, each one followed by a letter like the one you're holding. Samaritan took credit for all of them. No punctuation, no capitals, words left out, printing like a child. This one's like the others. And you haven't had one in five years? No. It's like a nightmare that all of a sudden stopped. We better show it to the police. Right. And then I'd like to get Jim McCrae's opinion on this. Why McCrae? Well, he covered this five years ago. Samaritan was his story. I've got him down in San Pedro on that oil pipeline thing. Better get him back up here. We're going to need him. Samaritan back. Phew. I'd hate to think this city is going to have to go through that trauma again. Give me Captain Jack Tanner, police department. He's a homicide. Yeah. You know... There was another guy in charge of the Samaritan Task Force. Bergman. Berg. Something like that. I forget his name. Do you know that there were 30 or 40 detectives on this case at its peak? And this Samaritan guy just one day disappeared? Yeah. Yeah, hello, Jack. Listen, we have something here. A letter that looks like it could be from the Samaritan. You remember him? Well, we want to make sure, so we're sending it over to you. It just came in the mail, right? Right. It was addressed to my city editor. Where was it postmarked? Glendale. Did you get that? Okay, I'm sending it over. You can let 20 of your detectives climb all over. Of course I touched it, but I was wearing gloves. That's a joke, Jack. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Why do cops always put you on the defensive? He made me feel like I was an accomplice of the Samaritan. I know what you mean. I'm dating a cop. Should I pretend I didn't hear that, or would you like to talk about it? Nancy Roden. She was in the press office downtown when I met her. Now she's an homicide. It's an unusual job for a woman. Unusual woman. The other night I hugged her, and I felt cold steel. Nothing from the police yet? Not a word. What about Driscoll? Oh, he's down in El Segundo. Policemen are on strike. He's covering it? He's robbing a bank. I know a cop downtown. Maybe I can find out something. That's worth a shot. 
Sergeant Roden in homicide, please. Extension 56. Sergeant, I was wondering if we could hold hands at lunch today. What have you heard of the Samaritan letter? Is it genuine or not? Are you asking me to release information prematurely? I'm not asking you to release anything. Just leak a little bit of it. As a matter of fact, by the time you get back to your office, you'll find out what the police analyst thought of it. Would you excuse me while I run back to my office? Never mind. I hate to eat alone. The impression is that it's the real thing. Huh. I just don't get it. Why another letter now? What's Samaritan been doing all this time? Where has he been until he sat down to write this letter? It's not unheard of that a personality like that could go into a dormant period. Dormant period? And come back just like that? Yes. Or he could have been in jail or something else or operating in a different part of the country. It's always great to come back to L.A., isn't it? <laughs> but tell me what this guy would be like. What do you mean? Well, give me a profile on him. How would I know him if I met him? Probably you wouldn't. He could be a passive type. He could be anything. A baby food salesman, an architect, a hat designer. I see. A city editor. How's the writer's block, Jack? I've done it again. It amazes me. I always come through. No, about that. Two o'clock in the afternoon and he's finished. And for that he gets what? hundred grand a year? Yeah, but think of all the research he has to do night after night in McKenna's bar, studying human nature. Yeah, I know. Nothing comes easy. Yo, McCray is back from San Pedro. Can you come in for a minute? What do you think, Jim? I'll have to go along with the police. It's got all the touches. So it really is Samaritan, huh? This is his style. He wants you to think he's illiterate or at least uneducated, but he's not. Just criminally insane. What does this Samaritan thing actually mean? All six murder victims were either motorists whose cars had broken down or hitchhikers. He would evidently stop to help or pretend to, the way the original Good Samaritan helped a traveler in trouble. Then he'd do his job and write to us about it, always with a quote from Book of Luke, Chapter 10. How much of a Samaritan? Well, that's the crazy thing about this guy. Sometimes... In his letters, he claimed actually to have helped distressed motorists or hitchhikers and then let them go on their way without ever suspecting who he was. Yeah, yeah but did, any, did anyone ever come in and actually say such a thing had happened to him? Well, no. You'd have to take the Samaritan's word for that. Mm. He's a real sicko, all right. It's just coming back to me now. I remember an instance. In one of his letters, Samaritan said there was this woman who ran out of gas. He drove back to a gas station, got her a couple of gallons. When she tried to pay him, he killed her. He said she wasn't accepting his help in the spirit in which he had offered it. I guess that taught her. Question is, should we print the letter? Hell yes, I say we run it. Well, I don't think we should. It isn't really news. You don't think six unsolved murders is news? Those murders took place five years ago. Right now, he's not making news, but we are, we print it. Don't you think the fact that someone has actually written a crazy letter like this is news? Hey, what scares me is the idea of giving an unstable person the publicity, feeding his sickness, and maybe pushing him into an unstable, insane act. There's also the possibility, Lou, that if we don't print it, that'll anger him and provoke him to the same act. Maybe the publicity is all he's after. Oh, why did he pick us? Why didn't he pick the Times or the Hell Examiner? Maybe he wants to help our circulation. Listen, when we ran those letters last time, our circulation was never better. In fact, I recall a rumor going around that Mrs. Pinchon wrote them. We're trying to outthink a crazy man, and we have no idea how his mind works. Well, we've got someone right here who knows him better than his own mother. Yeah. Jim, what do you think? Well, there's something to be said for both sides. Whichever way we go, there's bound to be a lot of nail-biting. Still, it's time we make that choice. Well, it's not for me to tell you what to do, but since you asked, I'll have to go along with Lou. Run that letter and you're playing with fire. I thought this kind of writing went out with Walter Winship. Oh, boy. What is it? Angel Town by Jack Town. Mm. I don't think you're going to want to hear this. I'm sure I'm going to want to read it. An open letter to Samaritan. 
Today, five years after you savagely took your last victim, your letter arrived in the offices of the Los Angeles Tribune. Have you returned to us to spill more blood, to return our citizens to a state of fear and terror? I personally appeal to you, Samaritan, refrain from inflicting more tragedy on the people of this city. Please, no more blood. Put down the knife. Give yourself up. Or talk to me. Call me. Write me. Anytime. Anywhere. I'll meet you in the dead of night. For God's sake, spare the city your terror. Enough is enough. Shall I go on? As the man says, enough is enough. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. I don't usually read Jack Town's column. I don't either. But after the mayor, the sheriff, and the chief of police called me, I thought I'd better read it. I thought you'd better read it, too. I wish I had read it before we ran it. I just hope Samaritan has the good sense not to read his column. I don't think we can count on that. I'm afraid our friend Jack has succeeded in getting the whole city to read his column this time. There's no accounting for taste, is there? Now that the cat's out of the bag, I don't think there's any choice but to cover it. Especially after it's been splashed all over the TV news. Not only did the city have to relive this terror, the families of the victims are going to have to suffer it all over again. But you're right, we have no choice, have we? Go run the letter. Or run the story how it arrived at the newspaper. We need some background. I'll get Jim McCray to write us something. What about that pipeline story he's been working on? I'll swing it over to Billy. She loves pipeline stuff. Why me? I thought you'd like it. Oh, Lou, it's about pipelines. I hate it. Besides, I'm already three weeks into this hospital story. Why can't you put Rossi on it? Because whoever takes over the story will have to work very closely with Jim. Share notes, share information, communicate. I need someone who can cooperate. And that lets Rossi out. I'd be starting this pipeline story from scratch. Jim can bring you up to date. He knows it better than anyone. I'm sorry, Billy. I know how you feel. The pipeline stuff is pretty interesting. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Jim. I'm blaming him. I'll make it as easy for you as I can. Come over to my house and we'll go over my notes. I'll even make dinner for you. Okay, I'll bring over some cake. You warm up the coffee and we'll go over this stuff. Billy, you see why it has to be you? Rossi would never think of cake. Everybody was buying me drinks last night. I hate to pass up a free drink. I hate to pass up any drink. <laughs> uh, I'm not in the mood to hear about your hangover, Jack. Yeah, neither am I. Don't you realize what you did? Yeah, I mixed vodka and bourbon. But they were buying them so fast, I couldn't tell. I'm talking about your famous Samaritan column. Your irresponsible, overblown, pretentious 750 words. Does that mean you didn't like it, Lou? First, you uh, blew the fact that Samaritan was back. Then you virtually challenged him to kill someone. I did a profile on a killer, and I alerted the public to a potential danger. You needed a column. This was closer to hand, and you didn't care about the consequences. What kind of journalism do you do, Lou? I was always taught when a story comes my way, I jump on it with both feet. What do you do when there's a fire? Send your reporters to the other side of town? No, but I don't send them out there to slosh it with gasoline, either. Look, my responsibility as a journalist is to turn in the most effective column I can. And that's exactly what I did. What about the fear and grief you stirred up? How about the agony of the families of the victims? Maybe they were starting to forget some of that horror until they saw your column. That's just the point, but I don't want anyone to forget what he did. Ever. Boy, the Trib did one hell of a job covering Samaritan five years ago. Who was your city editor then? We won't see the likes of him again. He was really sharp. Wait a minute, Charlie. Wasn't that when you were city editor? Oh, was I? I think you're right. Well, what was it like then? I've never lived in a city that was being stalked by a maniac. Uh, did it bring people closer together? If anything, it drove them further apart. Nobody trusted anybody. Forget about girls. I didn't score once that whole summer. You blaming him for that? Yeah, it's amazing that one crazy person can change the way a whole city thinks. Maybe we'll be lucky this time. Cop house just called. Looks like Samaritan paranoia has already started. What do you have? Well, the guy saw a motor stop by the side of the road. He stopped and got out to help. Got blasted with a shotgun. Nice. Right. Just like in the Bible. 
Uh, he's in a recovery room in stable condition, but we should get somebody over there to talk to him. I'm on my way. Look, I was brought up in a small town, and if ever anybody got in trouble, you'd stop and help them. I think I just got introduced to big city manners. Did the guy say anything? Did he give any hint of what he was going to do? No, no. I pulled up in back of him, got out of my car, and I still can't believe it. So exactly what happened? Well, he was looking under his hood. And as I come up to him, I, I think I said something like, uh, can I help you, fella? Well, he looks at me like, like he's seen Bigfoot. He runs around to the passenger door and pulls out a gun. And I am talking about a shotgun, and he fires at me. You thought you were Samaritan. <laughs> that's, that's what people have been telling me. But how is I supposed to know? I'm from Bakersfield. It doesn't exactly give me a very warm feeling about Los Angeles. But the police have cleared you. <sighs> yeah, yeah. But now I am a guy who was suspected of being Samaritan. The nurses watch me very carefully when they come in. You're probably standing here right now wondering if I am Samaritan. Even my wife is looking at me funny. Uh, you know, I've just been reading Rossi's piece on this mistaken Samaritan issue. Mm. Can you believe this? They're so twisted. Now, anybody who tries to do something nice for somebody is going to be looked upon with suspicion. Yeah, pussy guys like me are going to be out of style. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hit the freeway. I just hope on the way home I don't get a fly. Listen, if a little gray-haired lady pulls up in her car and offers to change your tire, yeah. check it out first. Be on your guard for hairy arms and tattoos. Oh, it's easy for you to be smug and secure in times like this. You're going out with a cop. Only person I've ever dated that I was sure could beat me up. You want me to follow you home? Why on earth would I want you to follow me home, Russell? You sure it's really not out of my way? No, thanks. I'll be okay. Why do you have to be so independent? The whole city's afraid of Samaritan. A fellow worker offers to see you home safely. It's not a sign of weakness to accept. It's a very nice offer, Rossi, but believe me, I'll be all right. I can take care of myself. Hey, Billy, ready to go? Uh, Try to make this pipeline stuff as interesting as I can. I'll lie if I have to. Okay, okay. I'm sorry about the way I acted. But I do think Lou was kind of arbitrary taking me off that story. Hey, I agree. I know what it feels like to be on a story and then get bumped. But that's the game. You want to eat first and then get to work? or? I'd like to eat first and then go home. <laughs> you know, if I were an insecure guy, I could take that personally. Okay, I'll stop. When I say I'm fixing dinner, I mean it. All right. You know, it's funny, when I was married, I used to like to cook. Now, I never seem to want to bother. I know what you mean. Are those two file cabinets just for Samaritan? I'm one of those people who can never throw anything away. I wish I was that organized. I can't throw stuff away either, but most of my old files end up under the bed. Well, I've always been neat. Teachers loved me. Always got A's and neatness and comportment. The Samaritan was kind of a hobby of mine for a while. I lived that story day and night. Some hobby. More like an obsession. Uh, you know how these stories can get under your skin. Didn't help my marriage a lot. In fact, I guess that's what finally broke things up. That's too bad. Yeah. She was a terrific woman. I guess I didn't treat her very well when this Samaritan stuff was going on. <laughs> this business can really chew up a relationship. I don't know. Maybe you found some way to work it out. Oh, yeah. I've got about five guys who told me to call them as soon as I quit being a reporter. <laughs> I think journalism school should offer a course. How to prepare your spouse for living with a news hound. I think it's hard for people on the outside to know how it feels to be on a big story. To eat it, sleep it, drink it. You ever think maybe sometimes it's not worth it? Yeah. Then something comes in off the wire and I don't see daylight for the rest of the week. It could happen to you with this pipeline stuff. <laughs> you know, everything about Samaritan is in those two files. If only someone knew how to put it all together. Does anybody? 
No. You know something else? I was halfway through a book on Samaritan, but publishers like books with endings, and Samaritan didn't have an ending. Well, after dinner, we can get to this pipeline stuff. You think there's a book in it? <laughs> Lou, I can't believe your food editor gave that restaurant three spoons. That's right. And she's usually chintzy with her spoons. <laughs> Maybe we didn't order right. How can you ruin chicken fried steak? <laughs> There's no one on the streets. Just you and me. It's Samaritan. Terrible. Are you kidding? This is L.A. There's never anybody walking on the streets at night. I could tear off my clothes and go running down the middle of this road and nobody would notice. <clears throat> I would notice, Lou. Aww. Oh. Thanks, Nancy. Mm. And haul you in on a 311. <laughs> You know something? What? Samaritan or no Samaritan, I feel a lot safer these days since I started dating a cop. <laughs> out of the way but I can take you there oh thanks you're a doll I've been standing there for 20 minutes how do you know I'm a doll huh how do you know I'm not a guy who drives around looking for girls like you you don't know who I am but you get in my car oh come on I can tell if you're safe you even got your seatbelt on <laughs> you think I'm safe huh you're really an expert on safe no no I always check out a driver before I get in the car I can tell if you're safe I could be Samaritan, you know. Who? Come on, you've heard of Samaritan, haven't you? No, who's that? Don't you read the newspapers? No, I don't do a lot of reading. Well, what about the TV news? I'm too busy. Well, you listen to me, young lady. You better stop hitchhiking and start taking buses. Because there's a psycho driving around in this city. And you could wind up in the trunk of a car someday. You know that? There's no guarantee you won't. And they might never find your body. Never. All because you thumbed a ride with a stranger. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not the guy. I was always trying to scare you. Morning. Morning, Lou. Did you meet with McCray? Yeah, we went over six folders of material. I now know more about oil pipelines than most Texans. McCray's very thorough, isn't he? Yeah, and he makes great Chinese food. Good as in a restaurant. Yeah. I knew you'd end up thanking me. Who? What? They want you in Mrs. Pinchon's office. Now? Another Samaritan letter came in. I am back with you for sure. Say hello to that pig, Bergen, for me. How does it feel, Bergland, to hear my voice again? The grave is open, bird brain. Want to step in? It's frightening. It's just frightening. And it closes with the usual Samaritan quotation and all. Bergen, Birdman, Berglin. Uh... That's just to denigrate Bergen. He obviously hates him. He keeps twisting the name to show his contempt. Who is this Bergen, anyway? He was, he was the detective in charge of the Samaritan Task Force. Oh, yes, I remember now. A sort of a personal duel developed between him and this lunatic. Do I remember correctly, Mr. McCry? Yes, ma'am, you do. Um, anybody locate Bergen yet? We've been trying to track him down, but without much luck so far. He retired somewhere up in the Sierras. Nobody's quite sure where. Somebody on the force must know. He didn't have any close friends on the force. He was always kind of a loner. Well, uh, his pension checks have to be sent somewhere. Dead end. Just a box number up in Bishop. <sighs> Main matter at hand is, do we print this second letter or don't we? I think we know what we have to do. Lou, I could take a shot at tracking Bergen down. Thank you, too valuable here, Jim. I still got a couple of leads on it. You're the only one I've got around here who really knows Samaritan. I can't have you chasing around on something like that. Turn the leads over to Rossi. Let him go after Bergen. Whatever you say. Thanks. Know Bergen well? We spent a lot of time together back then. Mm -hmm. It must have been pretty big stuff when Samaritan was around. 
I'd say so, yeah. Page one, interviews, predictions. Mm -hmm. Must be tough for a guy like that to just fade away. I don't know. I, I never felt that he was ever really that comfortable being a celebrity. Bergen was kind of an unusual man. He had very little vanity. I think he was a guy who liked doing his job and was frustrated when he couldn't get Samaritan. He had to quit with the case still unsolved. And he retired right about the time Samaritan disappeared. Not exactly. There was a brief period in between. How long? Well, I'd say a couple of months. And now, five years later, Samaritan's name is back in the news, right? And so is someone else's. Bergen's. Interesting. Yeah. something I have to do. I want to give myself up. I'm Samaritan. Okay, thanks. I walked into Hillside Division a couple of minutes ago and confessed to the Samaritan murders. Get Rossi over there and find Jim McCray. He's somewhere in the building. Oh, come on, Rossi. You know better than that. I told Lou. I can't give you information like that. You don't have to say anything. <sighs> Look, just do this. Blink one time for yes, two times for no. Cute. Seriously, just tell me what's going on back there. Look, do you think that guy's Samaritan or just another loony? I can't say anymore. I'm getting a headache. Hey, right here, pal. Right here. What made you think the name Samaritan, pal, huh? No comment, huh? Right here. What made you bring yourself in? I have a station for you later. The Lord commanded me to go among the people and do good works. When I went among the people, I saw evil. I couldn't do as the Lord commanded. So the Lord commanded you, but you didn't obey, is that it? I saw evil everywhere. And then what? I mean, what made you come here today and confess? The Lord commanded me again. He commanded me through the words of Jack Town. Jack Town, the columnist? Yes. Saw myself and all my evil through his words. City desk. Lou, I know this sounds incredible, but it's true. God commanded the guy through Jack Town. God spoke to Jack Town. Not directly. God spoke to the guy, but he used Jack Town as his interpreter. This isn't going to make him any easier to live with. God or Jack Town? What do you do? Keep your eye on this place until you see me go in? Now, if somebody calls me and lets me know. Listen, Lou, just because you made one bad call, you shouldn't get down on yourself. You're too good a city editor to let one mistake affect your news judgment now. Thanks, Jack. You don't know how much that means to me. I'm serious, Lou. I kind of lucked out, I know that. I followed my instincts and I came up a winner. I'm just lucky to have such good instincts. Can I go now? I read my column and recognized himself. Got to him. And tonight he's off the street. That's not all bad as a loom. Lou? I mean, what do you say? A kid you hated in school grows up and finds a cure for the common cold. I mean, you still hate him, but you gotta hand it to him, don't you? Something like that. I used to like town scholar when I was a kid. Listen, I used to like peanut butter and jelly on white bread, but I outgrew that too. Hey, Jim, over here. To this, the guy who confessed is not Samaritan. He's just an obsessive confessor. You're kidding. I just turned the story in. They took him over to County USC for psychiatric evaluation. It turns out he confessed to the Black Dahlia killing, the Lindbergh kidnapping, and the murder of Dr. Richard Kemble's wife. You mean that he is definitely not Samaritan? That's what Jim seems to be saying. Samaritan is not a functional illiterate. He just fakes it. The guy they brought in could hardly write his name, and he couldn't read Town's column when they stuck it in front of him. I have that same trouble. Hey, that's great. Gee, uh, Town's column for tomorrow is just one long pat on his own back. Shall we pull it? No, 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 no. We don't want to be censors. 
I mean, let him express himself. We don't want to stifle a columnist's creativity. So town was way out of line, huh? Oh, that's a moment to savor. <laughs> yeah. Except, of course, there's still a dangerous lunatic walking around loose, isn't there? Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and telling you it was dumb. How can you say that? I was doing you a favor and you say it was dumb? If you didn't know who I was, I could have been another nut with a shotgun. Guy gets out of a car looking like you. Hey, all right. Next time I'll leave you there. Just drive right on by. What happened? Oh, my car overheated about six blocks from here. Animal stopped to help me. Yeah, I already said I was sorry. Morning, fellas. Say, Jack. Hey, sorry, fellas. I can't talk about anything BC before coffee. I haven't seen you for a couple of days, keeping kind of a low profile, aren't you? Uh, I was in Montecito, the distillery owners convention. I go every year. Worth a few columns, anyway. No, but it's worth a few free drinks. How's it going, Lou? Aren't you even going to say you made a mistake? Never look back, Lou. That's my motto. Don't you feel any remorse even now, Jack? I mean, what did your column accomplish? Samaritan is still out there. The wrong guy turned himself in. Uh, some guy read the words I had written, and they touched him. How can I feel bad about that? the wrong person all you did was persuade a pathetic troubled guy who was trying to make a living driving a truck to confess to crimes he didn't commit and end up in custody yeah but look at the bright side of it i got some nut truck driver off the street have you got a minute these oil company contracts are driving me crazy just a second look at this there's a street in westdale called jericho on Luke 10, 30, quote, Jesus answering them said, a man was once traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. I was trying to see if all the old victims had been traveling in the direction of Jericho Street. Maybe get a fix on where Samaritan might strike again. Seems like kind of a long shot, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's worth a chance. This one here may prove more promising. I may have uncovered a witness in San Dimas where the fourth murder took place. I'm seeing him at 11. Oh, I gotta run. I'm just hazy on the original contract between the uh, oil company and the city of San Pedro. Yeah, well, it should all be in there. Well, maybe it is, but I don't understand it. <laughs> but I can't talk now. Oh, hey, Jim, remember, I've got a deadline. Well, see how far you can get on your own, and I'll get with you when I get back or in the morning for sure, okay? Yeah. Thanks. This is soft in the middle. I don't get it. Well, it's good, it's good. You've done some solid reporting, but there are too many missing pieces. It's sloppy for you, Billy. I can't run this. Okay. Give me more time. It shouldn't take more time with the groundwork McCray laid. For instance, can't he fill you in on this Environmental Safety Commission thing? Yeah, I well, think he can. Well, lately Jim's been a little hard to pin down. I mean, all he can talk about is Samaritan. All anyone in this town can talk about is Samaritan. Right, but Jim's obsessed with it. Oh, look, I'm sorry I said that. He's really just involved. It's a big story, and I'm on kind of a routine story and getting a little testy about it. I take that back. Jim's not obsessed. Sure he is. You can't do a story like Samaritan without becoming a little obsessed. Yeah, right. But I know McCray is really running with this thing. But have you read the pieces he's turning out? Of course. Pretty good stuff. Goes well beyond the usual crime reporting. I know. And knowledgeable. You get the feeling that McCray knows more about Samaritan than the police. But he's not a cop. He's a reporter trying to get out stories just like the rest of us. Or is that my imagination? No. Uh, here I go again. I'm sorry. I think Samaritan's got me irritable. Yeah. Me too. You know what's the weirdest part? The waiting. Wondering when and where he's going to strike. It's been over a week since the first letter. City desk. Lou, I've got a lead on Lieutenant Bergen. Where is he? Up in Lone Pine. He moved up there after he retired with his pension. He has a little trading post type store for campers and fishermen. I have an address, but apparently he doesn't have a phone. Okay, I'll put a sign on your desk. Go on fishing. Uh, Lou, doesn't that strike you as a little strange? The guy has his stories and business, but he doesn't have a phone. Tell me he sent someone else, Rossi? No, 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 no. I'm on my way. Look, do the best you can with this. I'll have a talk with Jim. Okay. Look, he's really a good man. If I said anything... Don't worry about it.
Hello? Hello? Joe Rossi, Los Angeles Tribune. Hi. You don't believe in the telephone? I took a lifetime's worth of phone calls when I was in homicide. People want to see me around here, they just stop by. Kind of a nice setup, Lieutenant. Oh, don't call me Lieutenant. People up here don't call me that. Most of them don't even know what I used to do. What do they call you? Well, kids around here call me Uncle Bill. Don't call me Uncle Bill. Okay. Just Bill. Okay, Bill. Mm. So, why does a young reporter drive all the way up from Los Angeles to talk to an old retired copper? It's about Samaritan. Do you remember Samaritan? Why don't you ask me if I remember how old I am? He's back. He's back? Or at least we think so. I thought maybe you'd have read about him. You should have made the papers up here. Well, reading the newspapers was another thing I stopped doing when I left the force. Are you surprised about him turning up again? No. Nope. I was more surprised when he disappeared. See, usually a psychopath like that will chill with increasing frequency until he makes a mistake and gets caught. Now, Samaritan was following that pattern. The time between killings kept getting shorter. Then suddenly he was gone. And that was in? October 73. I remember it well because I retired at the end of the year. You know, if he'd stayed around, maybe I would have stayed on. I really wanted to get that bird. The whole good Samaritan idea was so, so diabolical, so vicious. Yeah, well, he speaks well of you. He always mentions you in his letters. Yeah, he always did. It's funny. What is it? Well, if I were in your shoes, if I had spent six terrible months playing cat and mouse with a killer who mocked me in letters to newspapers, I think I'd be very anxious to find out what his latest letters said. Unless I knew what they said. Mr. Rossi, how would I know what they said? You tell me. If they're from Samaritan, I know what they're saying. If they're not, I don't care. In any case... I know you're going to be sticking them under my nose any minute now. His latest literary efforts. Yeah. Yeah what? Samaritan never wrote these. These are fakes. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A&E. My dad has been my dentist since my first... Do you have a Bible? Sure. Now, with me, it's at home. But I could find one. How long have you had it? You're calling all the way from Lone Pine to ask me how long I've had a Bible? How long, Lou, do you know? I guess since I was a kid, why? Yeah, well, isn't that the way it is with everyone? You have a Bible, you've had it for longer than you can remember, and it's your Bible. Well, Samaritan changed Bibles. In the old days, he used King James when he quoted St. Luke. Now he's using a modern language version. And nobody noticed. Except Bergen. Donovan. Where are the old clips on Samaritan? Stuff came up for you. Put it there. How much longer do you think you're going to be? A while, I guess. We were supposed to do something tonight. Press club. Wow. Letter said important meeting, nomination of officers. You planning on running for something? Mm-mm. Neither am I. But, uh... Rossi's going to try for sergeant at arms again. Oh, and you think we ought to be there to vote for him? No, I think we ought to be there to vote against him. Ah, there'd be plenty of votes against him. I think I'll just finish up here. What is it, Lou? You're on to something, aren't you? It's a hunch, and it's crazy. I want to talk to McCray about it. What kind of a hunch? Never mind, I'll let you know if it pans out. Okay. If Rossi wins by one vote, it's on your head. Hi, Jim. Well, Lou, come on in. Lou. Can I uh, get you a drink? Mm hmm. Scotch, right? Thank you. Glad you dropped by. This has been a frustrating day. I had a lead on Samaritan that turned out to be nothing. Ah. Uh, where you go from here? Well, I just keep slugging away. Yeah. Care to join me in a toast? What for? 
My book deal came through. Congratulations. Oh, I may need a little time off to write it. Ah, we can work it out. Thanks. Sit. I'll clear some of this away. Oh, right. oh. Jim, tell me what sort of man wrote these letters? Well, I always had a picture of Samaritan as a guy with a job in an office somewhere, uh -huh. putting in his eight hours every day, and nobody around him having the slightest hint of who he was. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I've been uh, reading over your Samaritan pieces, uh, not, not just the recent things. I also went back over all the original material. Really good work. Hey, thanks. Uh, I get a sense of Samaritan as someone who's um, alone, reaching out, someone who thrives on the attention, someone who loves the rush of being in the spotlight. And someone who is a psychopath. Uh, you have to be a psychopath to kill. I don't think you have to be a psychopath to write these letters. I don't follow. These last letters weren't written by Samaritan. Samaritan always used the King James Version of the Bible. This new Samaritan doesn't. Wow. That's an interesting angle. I'll have to run that down. Huh. Bergen's the one who spotted it. Bergen? Yeah, we found him up in Lone Pine. Oh, is that where he is? Yeah. Then I got to wondering. If Bergen is right, that these letters are fakes, who could be writing them? It couldn't be just anybody. It would have to be somebody who knew Samaritan as well as anyone, right? Makes sense. Yeah. Someone who could duplicate his style of letters so that even the police would be fooled. A person whose involvement in the case was so intense, so intimate, that he could impersonate Samaritan. You, for example. I didn't do it, Lou. Do you realize the pain that was caused? Terrifying a city? Turning friends into strangers? Wait a minute. <laughs> this was not a harmless act. It wasn't me. It was someone else, someone I didn't know, who wrote those letters. At my desk, with my hands. I couldn't stop it. I wanted it so much. I miss Samaritan, Lou. I hated him, but I missed him. When he was around, the world was so much more alive. When you think back on it, there were a lot of signs. His files on Samaritan, the way he wouldn't let go of the story. I don't understand how I could have missed it. But then, when I think about the guy, I just can't make the connection. Well, I know. I wasn't sure myself until he actually admitted it. This is one time I'm not very happy to be right. Yeah. You read Jack Town's column? It's all about Jim McRae. For God's sakes, that vulture, he'll really pounce on anything. Well, read it. In the newspaper business, we are forced constantly to rub elbows with life's tragedies and we become hardened, callous, even cruel. Sometimes we are hardest on our own colleagues. Because in this business, we tend to use people up. We take the best from them, their best writing, their best ideas, their best years, then discard them like yesterday's classified section. Some of us never get a chance to show what we can do. Some of us are tough enough to survive the passing of that glorious moment. Jim McCray is one of our casualties. I hope we don't forget him. Nice. Yeah. You think the police in the DA's office will nail him? Maybe we should show him that. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Why are city rooms always so bright? You wrote a good column, Jack. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What'd I say? I was pretty wrecked when I wrote it. Someday I'll read it to you. Anything interesting come in, fellas? I'm really dry. It's been kind of slow. Uh, tell me what you're working on, Billy. No, I will not college. <laughs>
He's credited with being the first European to have landed on North America. Great Explorers Week continues tonight with the colorful son of Eric the Red, Leif Erikson, on an all-new biography. Now, a cop goes undercover in Mexico to stop the sale of stolen goods. Join us for a police story next on a and I'd like to confirm. Hey, I've been getting the run around for two hours, and I'm well, coming Can you tell me approximately how much money was missing? Was it over? Just forget it. Hey, I don't want to forget it. Moron! Excuse me, is that May of 77? That's right. Think you'll be through with it soon? No. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Would you mind if I just quickly look something up? Yes. See, I'm a reporter and I'm on deadline. I'm doing a story. You mean what you're doing is more important than what I'm doing? No, I'm sure what you're doing is critical. You're the taxpayer lady. I'm just a selfish guy trying to find out if the Altamira city attorney's a thief. Take all the time you want. I reach for my laundry and this guy grabs a tire iron. I don't blame him, Lou. I wouldn't want to get hit with your dirty laundry. A little scary, you know. I was almost in a brawl with a total stranger. Now, if you'd been in a brawl with a friend... What happened? Oh, well, a guy came after Lou with a tire iron today. Are you okay? Yeah. Just so spooky how something like that can escalate out of nothing. But I, I'm okay. The guy eventually took off. Did you get your licks in? Billy! I mean it. Sometimes revenge is the best revenge. Yeah. I'm telling you, heart is stone. Listen, a guy stole a parking place from me once and then blew a kiss at me. Oh, no. Yeah, I might still be worked up about it, but I got even. I waited till he left and let the air out of his tires. <laughs> Good for you. What are you saying? Whatever happened to two wrongs don't make a right. It's an eye for an eye and a tire for a tire, Lou. What if the jerk had come back while you're working on his tires? She's stronger than she looks. No, no, you're right. It was dumb. An awful lot of fun, but dumb. Case number, you know I have no way of knowing what the case number is. Why don't you try helping me instead of making it impossible? That's how everything is filed by case number. I'm sorry, ma'am. You're not sorry. You just don't want to work. You want to sit around on your butt all day, collect your paycheck. Bring me a case number, and I'll get you the file. Hi, Joe. Yes, sir, can I help you? You're not going to ignore me. I'm not moving until you help me. Hello again. You stay out of this. Mind your own I business. I can get you the case number. Then do it. When you sweet talk me that way, how can I refuse? Yes, sir. See, they assign each police case a number depending on the date the file was started. What date is your case? I have 22 cases. Give me one. Okay. March 3rd, 1975. 
All right. Now, the case I'm looking at is May of 76. That's 84-532. Mm -hmm. Now we take a stab at another number, a lower one, say 84-001. I go up there, ask for the file, see what the date is. We work our way back till we get your case. It may take an hour or so, but we'll get it. That's simple. You're welcome. Now, since we're on a roll here, I'll go up to Monica, that's Monica, and ask for the file. Watch how nicely I treat her. See what results it gets. And listen, if you have any problems finding anything and I'm around, just stay away, okay? Bye. How can the story end up short? Rosenthal never writes short. Think of it this way. The chuckle of the day can run twice as long. I told you you were going out to cover a fire, Burroughs. It's your fault if you wore sandals. I don't have your notes. I'm not saying you took them. Maybe they hit by mistake. We don't even use the same kind of notebook. Look, that typewriter's mine during the day. It is now night, and that typewriter is all yours. Yeah, don't you know how to change a typewriter ribbon? Is that beneath you guys with master's degrees? Oh, cut it out, Gary. I didn't even know it was running out. Well, now you know, so change it. Don't throw that at me. Look, I spent half my shift trying to put what you write into English. Don't expect me to clear up the mess you make of this typewriter. Mess? I'm not the one who eats dinner off it. What do you do, row tortillas in that thing? Hey, you know, the night shift doesn't get two-hour lunches. I have to eat at this desk. Filthy. That machine is filthy. All right, hold it. You're not going anywhere until you clear that ribbon. I'm not. Uh, who's going to stop? I am. That's who. Hey, 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 hold it, guys. Oh, stay out of this. Stay out of this. Come, come on, now, cut it out. You don't deserve to have a typewriter. Hey, hey, I can't believe this. You're fighting hey, over a ribbon. typewriter. Hey, cool it! Right now! Now, I don't have many rules in this joint, because then I just have to enforce them. But here comes one. No hitting. No hitting. You can scream, you can jump up and down, you can break copy pencils, but never hit. It may not be very civilized out there, but it's never going to be civilized in here. Rossi. Are you the Joe Rossi that was in the Altamira Hall of Records today? Who is this? This is the sweet talker. Oh, no. Look, uh, I don't know how you tracked me down, but don't expect me to give you any more help. You left your notebook. You've got my notebook. That's great. Listen, can you bring it by the paper? Sure. Maybe I can pick up your laundry on the way. I'll be home at 7 tonight. If you want your notes, come get them. Okay. What's the address? Is that Altamira? I got it. Next time you're missing something, why don't you just not assume that the people you work with are stealing? Listen, this is not the day to criticize me. You have a special day? Be sure to let me know. Hey, Billy, there's been a lot of anger in the air. We've had violence in the city room. Plus, I have to troop all the way out to Altamira again before I can call it a day. So get off my case. Hey, Rossi. You know those clips with the strings that they give to kids so they don't lose their mittens? You could use those for your notes. Let them hang from your sleeves. Good night, Rossi. You said seven. Yeah, well, I had to make a call, and uh, it's only 7.15. And I have nothing better to do. Sorry. Here are your notes. Thanks. You live here? Oh, no. I just use this place for entertaining. Sorry. It's just a reporter's reflex trying to fit the person with the surroundings. Doesn't it fit? No. Where would you put me? All right. To me, to me, you're a house with aluminum siding and a cranberry glass collection. And a husband. In the den. With his feet up. On the TV on. Yeah. So what are you doing here? Why do you spend all day at the Altamira Hall of Records? Hold it. Hold it. You're one of those runaway wives, right? Left the kids in the kitchen behind to find yourself. You in law school? Wait, no, no. First year law enforcement. How'd I do? not cranberry glass in the window. It's Avon bottles. My husband has been an ex for years. And all this work is not for school. I'm investigating a murder. 
little amateur detective work. Right, let me give you one last bit of advice. Don't let your games interfere with what the pros are trying to do. Don't worry, the pros gave up on this one. Oh, uh, you think you can do better? The cops didn't lose their only son. Your son? Two and a half years ago, hit and run in Altamira. And you're not getting any help from the cops? They're stonewalling you? More like a fog bank. No, they say they've tried. Nobody's been rude. Well, you've been rude, but I don't count that. Tell me about it, would you? Here he comes. That envelope will have all the stories the Trib ever printed on your son's accent. One story, and I've read it. It's about this long. Here you go, Joe. Need anything else? No, thanks, Leon. Well, it could have been a busy day. August 4th, 1976. Lord Thompson of Fleet died, and the fire department bought four new helicopters. Oh, that was that day. I wrote the helicopter story. No, leaves fell by hit and run. No byline. There's a photo credit. Hey, animal! Dennis Price, Martha Emmett. Do you remember this story? I remember the picture I shot. Billy and I were on something else when this came in. Grim. Billy wrote it. Perfect. Follow me, Martha. Oh, gee, Mrs. Emmett, I'm sorry. I don't remember a thing. But I'm sure I've got my notes. Um, when did you say it was? 76? August. August. Uh, okay, got it. Fifth in Vantage, Altamira. That's it. Uh, hit and run, victim Danny Emmett. Oh, here's something. Uh, Donald Onofrio, witness. Moved to Rochester last November. Answered my letter, but didn't have anything beyond what he told the police. Oh. Well, Billy's got more, haven't you, Billy? Yeah. Evelyn Lum, one of those hysterical types. Her story changed every time I talked to her. Oh. Paul Man... Mm, Man Cuso? Marcuse, dead. Is that it, Billy? Well, here's something, maybe. I must have been writing in the dark. I wrote over it. It looks like Red Gas Station R. Stewart Drunk. Stewart, that's a new name. I think I met Rod Stewart the singer. Red gas station, R. Stewart drunk. Question mark. R. Stewart drunk? Great notes, well, Billy. Well, give me a minute, will you? I'll figure it out. Oh, Martha, stay with Billy a second. I want to talk to my boss. Okay. Lou? Yeah. <clears throat> I stumbled on something yesterday, and I'd like to see if you think it's a story. Sure. It's about this lady. She's from up in Gilroy. She's living all alone in a crummy room while she tries to track down the hit and run driver who killed her son. A little kid? He was 20. She's really something, Lou. Completely on her own. Quit her job. Sold her car. Spent all her dough. It's mostly a character piece as I see it. Is that her? Yeah, that's her. Well, let me meet her. Oh, no. No, need, Lou. You don't have to bother. No bother. Well, she's not easy to get to know. Uh, your first impression of her may you not... You want to do this story? <sighs> okay. Come on. I've got it deciphered, I think. Good. Martha Emmett, Lou Grant. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Emmett. Hi. Why don't we go to my office to have a talk? Because I'm busy here. This girl's got something for me. Oh, Billy can take notes for you. Let's talk. This is important. Why do you have to talk to me? I'd sort of like to get to know you. Listen, Joe, I really don't have time to waste kissing up to some boss of yours. Can you help me with this thing or not? Rossi, let's see you for a second. This is your grieving mother? I'm sorry, Lou. Tough little bird, isn't she? Well, Lou. Run with her. She's got it. Red worked at a gas station across from the scene of the accident. He looked like this Stewart person. I used to do that so I could tell which interview was which. And she says Red thought the guy who hit Danny might have been drunk. I didn't put it in the story because it didn't have his last name. Red, last name unknown at unspecified gas station. It's a great lead, Billy. Well, you know, a person's notes aren't really meant for public scrutiny.
Would you mind putting out that cigar? The time it takes me to put it out, I'll be at my floor. Indulge me. Ease up, will you, lady? This will be over in no time. You're breaking the law. You own this elevator? The elevator, the building, the block. <laughs> and this must be yours, too. So I do Rossi a favor, and he embarrasses me in front of a total stranger, in front of a very nice lady who I'm sure thinks I'm a total idiot. All right, come on, this is good. You're getting everything out. No, it's not helping at all. Take this. What, you want me to write it all out? No, no. Break the pencil. Focus all that anger on the pencil and let it rip. Okay. Well? I can do it better. I don't know. There's something missing. Just a second. What are you doing? Rossi's pencil. Thank you. <sighs> Don't you think we're justified in going up two pages for the sake of all that art? Something going the matter? Oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I... Something just happened to me that I was determined would not spoil my day, but it did. What happened? Well, I was in the elevator, and a spectacularly rude man blew cigar smoke in my face. We had words, and he presented me with his cigar, his slimy, half-smoked cigar. Gee, it's terrible. What did you do? Well, I said to him, I cannot rob you of the only thing in the world that lights up in your presence. <laughs> what a great comeback. I was telling him. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I was four floors away when I thought of it. Oh, I can still smell it on my hand. What? Why does a guy act like that? Where does all that hostility come from? There's a lot of that going around. If there's so much of it going around, why haven't I read about it in the trip? I think we'd better put a reporter on this, Lou, before our publisher starts breaking arms. I know. Thank you, and have a good day. Seven thirty in the morning. They got a speed trap set up at seven thirty in the morning. It's dawn for crying out loud. You aren't going that fast. Welcome to Altamira. Twenty-five bucks. You're gonna fight it, aren't you? Are you kidding? This town's got a traffic court run by the last of the hanging judges, a guy named Cromwell. I'll pay the money. You remember August 3rd, two years ago? Sure, that's the day the fire department bought four helicopters. First day of nice weather after a hot spell. Smokey and the Bandit was playing second run at the Crest Theater, about six blocks over that way. Danny saw the seven o'clock show. We went to a liquor store over there and bought a six-pack of root beer, a couple of blueberry yogurts. Got about 75 feet and he realized that his left rear tire was flat. We found out later he'd gone over a nail. He decided to change it himself instead of going to that gas station. The trunk was up and he'd had the hubcap off and three of the nuts when he was hit. This way. He landed here. Came down on his right shoulder. Broke his neck, the shoulder, and arm, six ribs. The internal bleeding that killed him. And the car took off. Swerved to avoid hitting Danny a second time. Then hit the accelerator and was gone. You're so cool about it. This is not the first time I've walked this through. Martha. I would like to do a story about you and what you're doing. I hope you don't mind. I don't mind. You've been a help to me. Nothing's ever free. Hey, come on, Martha. I didn't mean it that way, like it was a trade-off or something. Wouldn't matter if you did. Red feel. <laughs> yeah, red worked for me a couple of years back. 
You think there might be an address on them? Well, my boys usually let me know where they are. They know when they're broke, I'm an easy touch for a couple of bucks. Red couldn't decide if he wanted to be a country bass player or a hydroplay tracer. <laughs> so he went to work in a gas station. Nothing like checking people's oil a hundred times a day to help you make up your mind. Uh, here we are. You went with the hydroplanes. <laughs> He's probably somewhere out on the circuit. Thanks. I love my car. So one place where I can really just let go and be myself. Yeah. Yeah, none of that forced formality we demand of you around here, huh? According to the psychologist, people feel anonymous in their cars. It's like a shell or armor. Or a weapon. Well, that's the other thing. The road is apparently a very tempting place for letting out anger. Because first, nobody knows you. And second, you're inside this 2,000-pound monster ready to attack. Sure, because everybody's equally powerful in a car. Some little wimpy guy just touching the accelerator. Suddenly, he's the Hulk. Yeah, the great release of tension, all right. The only problem is the poor guy who ends up the victim. Anyone know anything about hydroplanes? I get a lousy mileage in the city. Keep your car. Skip it. Where you been all morning? Out to Mira. It took longer than I thought. Why? It's okay. Tell Rosenthal to stand the garbage thing. Okay. What garbage thing? The AP ran a story this morning that the Justice Department is investigating Councilman Garbage. No kidding. Mm. Well, don't give that to Rosenthal. I've been on garbage. Give it to me. Rosenthal's got a jump on it. You can't do the hit and run story in garbage, too? I guess not. Damn! It's happening again. When am I ever going to learn? Letting my emotions get in the way of my news judgment. I follow my heart instead of my head. Just a sentimental old fool, huh? Rossi, telephone. 542. Thanks. Rossi. It's Martha. What'd you find out? About Red Keel? I haven't had a chance, Martha. I just got back. Well, I figured if you got an address, we could look him up before the end of the day. You know, it's been two and a half years. You think Red's going to forget what he saw between now and tomorrow? We're on to something. I want to do it now. Hold it just a second. I got another call. <sighs> Sorry, Martha. It's, it's, it's a real madhouse here. I'm just... I'm just going to need a little more time before I can try to get a line on Red. See, uh, I've been letting my other work slide, and I think if I can clear everything else out of the way, then I'll really be able to focus in on the case. Okay? Just, uh, just a, a, a few days uh, will be a really big help. I understand. Goodbye. What do you mean, goodbye? I just need a couple more days. I've heard this before, Joe, and you're getting out. I can do this alone. Your help was making it easier, but I can do this alone. Thank you, and goodbye. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and I had this idea. It's going to use a lot of your time, but it might be worth it. What if you check the parts manufacturers for hydroplanes? Red might be a customer. Okay. And I'll see if there's a hydroplane association tomorrow. They might give me something on them. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Well, got a full day tomorrow? Joe, what's going on? I thought you quit. You're not easy to quit on. Martha. Yes? Something's been bothering me. How come you don't have any pictures of Danny here? I've been wondering. I remember what he looked like. Yes, I know. But you usually see a whole shelf full of pictures. I mean, my mom's got a collection. Of... I know, like a little shrine. I never felt that way about Danny. How do you feel about him? Please, I'd like to know. What can I say? He was a kid. Had his dad's easygoing way. It always cracked me up. Why was he in L.A.? Oh, he was going through that time kids go through when the only thing they know for sure is they want out. Out of the house? The house, Gilroy, the work. So he saved his money. I gave him a hundred of my own. He came down to L.A. How long was he down here? Almost a year. 
Did he find what he wanted to do? No. Two weeks into anything, it was boring. Or dumb. You know what I mean? Why is that, Joe? Well, I know what you're talking about, but it's not something I ever went through. From the time I was little, all I ever wanted to do was be a reporter, find out about things, tell people. I've been lucky. <sighs> I guess. Said not caring. That's what I don't understand. Me, I was born believing. I grew up during the war. We were told as kids that our believing was as important as the fighting. I still sort of think I'm partly responsible for VE Day. I believe in everything. The country, the Methodist church, even the Gilman Egg Ranch. I candled eggs for 18 years. What do you do when those things let you down? I grew up in Wichita, where the Cubs had a triple-A farm team. They got beat every year. But I still love my Cubs. I always figured that was part of the deal, sticking by them when they didn't deserve it. Maybe that's why I'm looking for who killed Danny. Because you want to stick by him? No. Danny lived his whole life never knowing how good it felt to really care. About a job or a girl or an idea. That's a terrible cheat, Joe. It's the worst cheat I can think of. Can I use your office to scream in? Not with me in it. What's the matter? <sighs> it's this damn hit and run thing. I cannot find a witness. Oh? Timothy Keogh, nicknamed Red. The Hydroplane Association's only got a post office box for him. If he's got a phone number, it's unlisted. He's not registered to vote. I checked the title office. He doesn't own any land. He's not a member of any union, and none of the Keoghs in L.A. know him. That's it. I am totally stuck. I could write him, but that'll take days, and Mark is all keyed up, so... That's it. It's screaming time. You know, you could at least listen to me. Is this Arlene? Blue Grant. Well, I just thought I'd call to find out what kind of spell you cast over my delivery boy. Ever since I called you, that paper's been at my door right on time. Come on now, you living doll. You, I know where the real part of this paper is. Ah, uh, 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 watch what you say, lady. One of these days I may take you up on it. Uh, we got a subscriber named Timothy Keo or Red Keo. K-E-O-U-G-H. The hunger. Got a phone? Uh-huh. Five, two. You're the greatest. Uh, listen, how come your paper never covers hydroplane races? Well, that's not my department, you know. Well, we get 15,000 people watching us sometimes. Huh? It's booming. Oh, I'm not just saying it to get my name in the paper, but you'd get more readers, believe me. Well, I'll tell the guys over in sports. So, what is it you want to know about that hit and run? Well, what can you remember? Who, are you kidding? Everything. I dream about it every couple of months. You think you can separate what you dream from what you remember happened? Oh, yeah. But the only thing different about the dream is when I go up to the kid, it's me. And the driver of the car is me, too. Wow. That's weird, huh? <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't even want to know what that means. What do you remember? Well, I was pumping gas for a lady in a white sports car. And I heard the sound. There's nothing like it. Well, you know, you hear near misses all the time. But this was totally different. Ooh, boy. I turned and I saw that black limo swerving away. I mean, that kid just flew. And when he hit... Hey, hey, this is the kid's mother. Let him tell it. Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry. Go on. Well, there was broken glass all around. Uh, I guess the guy's headlight was busted. And it was a limousine? Well, no. Not a big long one with the chauffeur and stuff. But it definitely was a black Cadillac. You've been a real help. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Why didn't you tell this to the police? I did. 
They took a statement from me that night. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Well, you've got us, Mr. Rossi. I have uh, reasons for the foul-up, but nothing you could call an excuse. What are those reasons, Chief? Well, that summer, uh, I wasn't Chief then, but I checked this out. We switched all our records over to computers, which meant that we hired a lot of temporary help. Well, they just weren't qualified, and some things got lost. Some things in the computer, we may never retrieve it. And by the time we caught the problem, uh, material on more than a dozen cases was destroyed. The Emmett case was one of them. Well, as I say, there's no excuse. And that's it, incompetence. Well, I am not proud of what we did. You ever think of making that your motto? You told me to give you this. Let me guess. It's the... Come on, now, let me guess. It's the Alfa Romeo. No. Hey, just a minute. Now, there's no way you're at a station wagon. Look, I'm really pressed for time. And hey, what's it going to cost you? 30 seconds? The van. No. I'll give you a hint. It's the blue Mustang convertible. Ask me for a favor sometime. Come on. I've been to every body shop in Altamira or within a 10-mile radius. Nothing. I'm sorry, Martha. I guess that was really a long shot. Listen, the one thing I have is time and energy. Let me go after the long shots. Uh, whoever owned that black car probably took it out of town. Maybe San Diego or Santa Barbara. Or paid somebody to do the work in secret. Martha, I was in a body shop today. I've been there. Will you wait a second? You haven't been to this one. This body shop is in the Altamira City Garage. What? Martha, what if the city's tied into this? You want to meet me there now? Tomorrow, Martha, please. All right. 7.30 tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock. I'll be long gone by 8. Okay, 7.45. I'll pick you up. Make me breakfast. 7.30. Bring donuts. Put that out, friend. I'm not riding far. Try holding your breath. City ordinance, you know. You're breaking a law. You're breaking my heart. Hold on there. This, this is interesting to me. Why does a person break a law, fill, a, fill an elevator with smoke, and just generally be offensive to people who never did anything to him? Oh, did I offend your delicate sensibilities, Magnolia? Well, ah, here you go. It's all yours. You. You did that to Mrs. Pinch on the other day. Now, that's me. That makes you the second old lady I've given my cigar to. Who do you think you are going after Mrs. Pinch on like that? How do you think you're doing? See, you're trying out long. Hey, come on. Get on. What are you doing? I want to hear you apologize right now. No, get off. Right now. Loud. Apologize. Loud. Loud enough for Mrs. Pinchon. I'm going to hear you. Keep away. It's just between him and me. Charlie, for Pete's sake, call off your dog, will you? You know him? No, him. He's my roofer. I missed him the other day. I've been waiting six months for him to come around. Hang on to him while I get my copy of the contract. You get towed again? No, no, look, where do you keep your records? You're kidding. No, no, I'm a reporter, I'm working on a story. And since this is a matter of public money being spent, it's your duty let me look at your records. No, Joe, hold it. I don't want this man to do anything he feels uncomfortable doing. Thanks. Then you see stuff like that is not something I can authorize. 
Sure. See, this reporter here is helping me. I had a boy. Looked a little like you. Love taking cars apart. Warren really had a gift, you know. Warren. That's my name. My lord. Well, I lost my Warren. Hit by a car in this town in 76. I'm trying to find who did it. That's why we wanted to look at your records. See if there was any body work done on a black Cadillac around that date. But I guess you only have economy cars here, huh? Oh, no, ma'am. We've got awful nice city cars. The big officials get used to them. Look, Mrs. Mrs. Emmett. Emmett. Mrs. Emmett. I just can't believe that I would be doing any wrong to let you look at the records. No, Warren, I don't want you bending any rules for me. No, listen, they leave me here alone. That puts me in charge. And I say you can look at the records. Come on. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. August 20th, August 18th, August 9th, 7, 6, 2, 4. 4. He'd have the body work done on the 4th. Black cabinet. Black cabinet. Martha, Martha. Mrs. Emmett, you are missing a work order here. 00175-00177. Now, how could that happen? Let's hear it for bureaucratic duplication, 00176. One headlamp, XM130. One headlamp rim, M350. Body work on front end, four hours. Paint job, two hours. Who signed for the work? Willis J. Cromwell. Where do I know that name from? From me? Runs a traffic court in Altamira. He's the judge I wanted to avoid. Looks like he's been avoiding us. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on A and E. Hi, Lou. Morning. Oh, Lou, I need an extra day on my violence story. Now, don't hit me. Well, sure, Billy hasn't forgotten. Nobody's forgotten. Well, at least we kept it out of the paper. I don't know. Didn't you always see Lou as more of an intellectual brawler? I'll be back. And in this corner. That's only funny the first 200 times. You're really giving you the old treatment. The works. Someone even changed the name of my parking space to Lou Palooka. It wasn't me, Lou, I swear it. Charlie. Oh, come on, Lou, forget it. This is what everyone keeps saying. I hit your friend, and I'm sorry. McPhee's my roofer, not my friend. He's a jerk. In a way, that makes it worse. Puts me in his league. I don't know, Lou. Charles Bronson is able to pull this kind of thing off. Of course, he throws guys up against walls, hasn't sat on a villain for a long time. What really gets me is that even when I was doing it, it didn't feel good. You figure I'd at least get a charge at the start. Well, now you know. Yeah. Still feeling bad, huh? Kind of. I know what'll make your day. What, sir? I just found me a new roofer. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on the bench a number of years, Your Honor? Uh, only 12, but I've been a lawyer 30 years. All of your service in Altamira? Oh, yeah. You're looking at a native Californian. My grandfather built his brickyard here. Alta Altamira just grew up around it. As a longtime observer, what would you describe as the chief crime problem in your district? Oh, well, my bailiwick is just traffic court, but it's happening everywhere. Lack of respect for the law. The system's eroding. You blame law enforcement? Oh, no. <laughs> Though the cop on the beat looks more and more like a kid every day. No, 
Our system is built on its citizens respecting the law. Once they become cynical, starts to unravel, you've got anarchy. And that's what's happening. I'm afraid so. Your Honor, during the past months, Martha and I have been made aware of what appears to be an intentional miscarriage of justice here in Altamira. Well, I wish you'd tell me about it. Well, it happened to a kid who just turned 20, victim of a hit and run. At Fifth and Vantage at 1042, the night of August 3rd, 1976, a big black Cadillac hit him while he was changing a tire. That little, that little tremor that ran through him. The guy could barely pull himself together to make a denial. Okay, now what we've got to do is line up some heavy-duty help. If we can't get anyone in Altamira, we'll go to the state. You tired? Yeah. Oh, we won, Martha. You were right. His father will want to know. Hello, Leanne? It's Martha. Is Fred there? I'll call in the morning. Hi, Fred. No, I'm still in Los Angeles. Fine. Listen, I have news. violence story to make a nice companion piece to my hit and run story. Forget it. Oh, come on, Billy. You shouldn't let your ego get in the way here. It'd make a nifty little sidebar. It's not a good idea because there is no story. I shelved it. Why? Well, we all had a lot of hunches, but not too much substantiation. Whenever I write one of these what's the world coming to stories, I want to make sure I can back up the pessimism with figures. <sighs> well, maybe it's just as well, since mine's kind of turning into an upbeat story. Martha finally found a judge who'd listened. And when he read the stuff we dug up, he decided to go after Cromwell. Thanks to him, the case will be going to trial. So everything will be out in the open. I'm glad for her. Yeah. What's she gonna do? I'm taking her to the bus station this afternoon. Martha, do you have to go by bus? I could fly, but what's my hurry? So what are you gonna do now, Martha? Are you kidding? Back to the egg ranch. I'll try sweet-talking him into letting me have my old job back. When that doesn't work, you'll bully him. I picked my fights very carefully, Joe. That isn't one of them. Gilroy. Thank you. Well, next time you're in L.A., uh... I won't be back. Okay. Next time I'm in Gilroy. Right. You ever been to Gilroy? Uh, I just, I just don't want to say goodbye. You mean a lot to me. Do me a favor. Sure. Give your mother a call. Okay, good idea. And thank you for everything. Thank you. Martha? Oh. I'll send you copies of our story. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Joe?
I'm Mike Wallace. The age of rage, pain, and paranoia. Has hate become hip on an all-new 20th century? Tonight, only on A&E. Now, no one's going to stand in the way of their plans. Mobsters hire a hitman to dispose of an opposing rival on Police Story, next on A&E.